Hey, what's shaking other than this review? Hey, what's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the DSO2 Recording Alliance. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging right up front. Here we have a nice image of a DSO2 Recording Alliance, bloody 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 on this side, Recording Alliance on this side, Recording Alliance up top, Recording Alliance on the bottom. Number DSO2 on the back. You also have Recording Alliance, and that's basically it for the packaging. Then moving right along, here we have DSO2 Recording Alliance, and this is their take on a masterpiece scaled blaster. And here he is in his robot mode, and I love this figure. He just looks delicious. Just delicious, just scrumptious, but yeah. Um, just nice and cartoony and g one -y and looks like he jumped right off the screen and is standing on my table, and I absolutely love him. I love him so much. Love the way this figure looks. But let's get in close here so we can take a look, not at his buttons, but at his noggin. There's his noggin. You can see you get a nice metallic blue there for the eyes, white for the face. A nice blastery head sculpt there. Quite love it. You have the tape deck with the tinted transparent plastic there. And you got his buttons. And, oh no, very simplistic in its detailing because they're trying to keep it, you know, cartoony. Make it match the current masterpiece aesthetic. Got a little paint scuff here and there, but that's fine. Battle damage. That's all just battle damage. Little spots of red in there. His big old feet. But oh no, nicely done. And the back, as clean as can be. Very clean transformation here. Looks really good. I am very, very pleased with this figure. Now, articulation-wise, uh, the head uh, is on a ball joint. You get a little bit of wiggly waggly. You get some up, you get some down. Head can do a full 360. Uh, the arms are a nice ratchet. Can do a full 360, can move in and out at this hinge here. You also have this hinge right up here as well. So you have two points at which the shoulder can move if you need it to. You get bicep rotation. You do have a double jointed elbow. So you have nice full range of movement there. Um, you have wrist rotation. The hands are articulated. You do have a ball joint at the base of the thumb, and a hinge there and a hinge there, and each finger is on a hinge at the base and a hinge right there. So you get nice, poseable hands. He does have waist rotation. It's quite snug on mine, but he does have waist rotation. He also does have an ab crunch. Get a little bit of crunching action going on there. Now, as far as the legs go, you need to shift them downward to get your leg articulation. Legs can go forward that far, and back, you're only going to get about that far. Outward, you can do the full splits, and shift this back up. You do have thigh rotation, you have a double jointed knee, all ratchets, to get a nice range of movement there. And as far as the feet go, you do have a toe joint that can move up, not downward, but you do have some ankle tiltage. Now, as far as accessories go, a uh, blaster does include his blaster. So here is blaster's blaster. You can see just done in a dark gray. Again, not too much detailing wise, just keeping it simple. For the sake of keeping it, you know, kind of cartoony looking. And of course he can wield his weapon. It is the typical tab in the slots of the palm method of weapon holding. Just tab that in, wrap his fingers around it. Like so, there you go, you can pew pew bang bang, pew pew, bang bang, and all of that good stuff right there. And he does also include a pair of speakers, just done in a nice gold. And you can put these on both hands, I'll just show it off on one, just for the sake of demonstration. So you just want to open up his forearm here, and you're going to rotate his hand, so it's palm up, and then swing it around. 
close this back up and now you have this exposed peg and you just plug the speaker on and now he has speaker hands and now he can pew pew play beats pew pew play beats and all that good pew pewing and playing of beats and blaster does include one of his cassette bots we get a little uh, little ram horn here here he is in his little rhino mode getting close here you see the eye is painted red and unfortunately that just kind of blends in with the color of his head, so you can't really tell his eyes painted, but his eyes are painted. <laughs> they are painted. Just wish they were done in a more, you know, contrasting color, but no, it is what it is. You can always paint it, really. And you got the weapons on the hips there, done in gold. Guys, little hooves. And it looks quite nice. Little tail there. Oh, yes, dear tail. And articulation wise, the head can move up, can move down. Oops. I'm pegging his weapons here. But head can move up, can move down. The front legs can move forward and back. You have a double hinge here. So you can move that forward and back. The hind legs can also move forward and back. You have a double hinge here as well. It's more for transformation, but you can get some posing out of it if you need it. And the tail can move up and down. And that's pretty much it right there. And for comparison, uh, here he is with G1 Ramhorn, because he's precious. Oh, so precious. So, there you go. And one last thing that is included is an optional face. So, what we need to do here is just kind of get under this and just rip his face off. And, ah, that's always, always so disturbing. But we can replace it with the new face. And voila, now Blaster is happy. He's smiling. Hooray, 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 yay. So there you have that. And now for comparison. Here he is with MP44 Prime. Here he is with the Fans Toys Soundwave. And I think these two look quite, quite nice together. That looks so good together. Love it, love it. Here he is with the DS Starscream, just so you can see how he looks with their uh, previous release. And here he is with the Keith's Fantasy Club version of Blaster. And this is a really good figure also. I really do like this figure as well. And of course, you know, it all just depends on what you're going for. If you want a more, you know, kind of modern take on Blaster, you know, this is definitely a very good figure to go with. If you want that more cartoony look, this is the one you want. And of course, here he is with G1 Blaster because he's precious. Oh, so precious. So, there you go. And there is Blaster with his little pet rhino. And that is precious. That's just, that's just all. Oh. But that is basically it for the robot mode. So let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's. So, first thing we are going to do here is we're going to... Turn him around, and we're going to untab this back panel here, bring it up, and then just untab all this, bring it down, raise this up, which will allow you to then flip out this panel here. Once you've done that, you can take the head, flip that back, and then you can just bring that down and close this back up. Then you want to take this panel, rotate it around, and it will just tab in right there, like so. And there you have his head all tucked away. So once you do that, now we can work on the armular region. So you want to rotate the hands in and then rotate the arm in at the bicep. You want to open up the forearm here like that. And then you want to open up this panel here on the shoulder like that. And then you're going to just rotate all of this up, and there is a tab right here that will go into the slot right there. So just bring it up, and that will tab right in. And then you just rotate the hand in, and there you go. The second verse is just like the first. So rotate the hand in, rotate the arm in, open that up, open up the shoulder panel, and then rotate all of this up that will tab in rotate the hand in 
And there you have that all done. And that's pretty much all the transformation you're doing to the upper body. The majority of the transformation is happening in the legs here. So coming on down to the legs, we're going to start by shifting the legs downward. You want to come here to this little section right here by his foot and flip this down like that. It's kind of tight on mine. And then you're going to come here to this back panel and you're going to untab this like so and just open this up you want to tilt the ankle at about 45 degrees or so that will allow you to just swing all of this out and then we can work on everything going on in here so we can bring down the handle and you can take the toe and just fold that in like that so black panel here will rotate around then you're going to take all this and swing it down like so. Then you're going to bring up this panel. You're going to tab this section here. Make sure it's completely straightened out. And oh, before you do that, you need to just bring that foot back in. So that way it's out of the way. Rotate this 180 and then bring it back down. So little tab slot connection there. Bring that down like so. And there you go. And this little black section here. You're just going to rotate out like that. Once you've done that, and you can bring the leg out, and you want to make sure that it collapses in. It has collapsed into the body as you can get it, like so. There you have that side all done. And second verse, guess what? Just like the fast. So open that up. Come in here. Open that up. Bring that open. Tilt the foot so you can swing this out. Swing that down. Bring the toe in. Straighten all this out. Rotate this little black panel. Swing this around. Bring this up using all those hinges. Rotate it. Collapse back in. Swing this little section out. And again, you're just going to bring the leg down so you can then bring that up and collapse that in as much as you can so now we got him doing the splits and we are getting there so next thing you want to do is you just want to bring these sections up you just want to collapse this panel down this double hinge so it's sitting flush with that. You have a little tab right here that you're going to rotate to the back. And once you've done that, you kind of bring this out a little bit. You're going to then rotate all of this up. And what's going to happen here is this tab. Actually, before we do that, we still have something we have to do. Apologies, apologies. His crotch does transform also. You want to <laughs> pull this panel out. Rotate it around, and that will swing in right there. So now we can rotate this up, and now this tab will go into the slot right here, and you have this tab right here that will go into the slot right there. So just get all that lined up, and that will tab in, that will tab in, and there you go. Now you got to do the same thing on the other side. Bring that down. Swing that to the back, and then rotate all of this in. Again, just line up those tabs and slots. Like so. Tab that in, like that. There we go. We can bring these little sections down. Ugh, that one's very stiff on mine. Bring that down. And there we go. And kind of adjust the hips and adjust things out here. Also, one thing you want is you want the um, this hip here to sit. There you go. You want, you want this sitting kind of proud of this section here. You want this kind of sitting above that. Because if you don't have it have it that way, then things are going to be bowed, and it's not going to work out the way you want it to. So make sure you have that. And I clicked out like that. That's how you kind of want that oriented there. 
And then once you get everything together, everything will sit flush now, as it should. So there we go. Make sure, make sure this little panel here is also up. Of course, everything fights me because the camera's on. There we go. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Now everything is good. Now everything is right with the weld. There we go. So now we will swing to the back here. This panel here will untab. You just kind of want to get it started like that. And it helps you if you give it a little wiggle wiggle also. And rotate that around. And then this panel here will unfold. And you have a tab slot connection right there. That will tab in. So you lock all that in place. And same thing on the other side, just kind of get in there. Again, if you have trouble, just give it a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. This this uh, panel is on a, a spring, so you can't pull it out. Rotate around. And then you just unfold this section here. Tab it in. Boom, like that. So everything is sitting nice and flush. Get all that together. And one more thing to do, just take the handle, bring it up, that'll swoop into place, bring that up, swoop it into place, connect the two halves, and there we go. There we have Recording Alliance, aka Blaster, in his alt mode. And he's a nice little boombox. I can work with it. I can work with it. My only real critique is that I think this bottom section here is just a little, little too long. This could have been like, you know, supposed to be a little shorter. But all in all, though, I think it still looks pretty dang good. Let's just get in closer. Okay, he's got some panel lining here. And yeah, just keeping it simple with the detailing. But all in all. Looking quite nice. Again, tidies up very nicely. And there's the top. There is the bottom. He slides like boom boxes should slide. Hooray for sliding boom boxes. Right. And for comparison, here he is with the Keith's Fantasy Club blaster. So you can see how that works out. And here he is with G1 Blaster because he's precious. Oh, so precious. And here he is with Little Ramhorn. And of course, we can transform Ramhorn into his cassette mode. So to do that, first we're going to remove his weapons. Put those off to the side. And what we're going to do here is we can... Fold down his little ears. Yes, his ears do move. His tiny little ears move. Just bring those back. And you take the horn and you bring that back like so. And you just fold up the front legs on either side. Like that. And then you just flip up the hind legs. Like so. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to just split him down the middle, all Mortal Kombat style. Oh, fatality! Anyway. And there's this tiny little tab right here that you're just going to flip in. Like so. Now you're going to open up these rear sections like that. Now these sections right here, you're going to slide them in like that. And then it will flip up and you have a tab slot connection right there. And same thing on the other side, just slide that in. And then flip it up and tab that in like so. And you can bring the head to the head down like that. You're going to take this section here, flip that up. And you're going to take this whole rear section here and you're just going to rotate it around. And get that into place. Tail will tuck in like that. And the last thing you're going to do is store the weapons. That will just plug in right there. And right there. And there you have Ramhorn in his cassette mode. And he looks like a little cassette. 
Kind of, sort of. I mean, it's the general shape. You got the little... Uh, these little sections here done in black. I don't know. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And again, for comparison with G1 Ramhorn. Focus. There we go. There's what G1 Ramhorn. And it is a little bit bigger than the G1. You can see it's little bits. Like, ever so slightly wider. I don't know what you can tell on camera. There it goes. Like, ever so slightly wider. Obviously a little bit thicker. But there you go. Now, here is where there is a, uh, a flaw with the figure. Because we can bring Blaster in. And the tape deck does open. You just push this. Boop. Pops right open. Nice and spring-loaded. You get some molded detail in there as well. Um, the problem is, is that uh, Ramhorn doesn't really fit in here. He fits, but it's really, really, like, it's super tight. It's just, like, it's just, it's not a pleasant experience trying to get this kind of wedged in there. And it's just, it, it's, it's tight. And then a piece of Ramhorn pops off every time I do that. And then you can't really, but it's just... I don't want to push it back because then he gets stuck in there and then when he gets stuck in there I can't get him out and then I need kind of a tool to kind of help. Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's a little too much and a piece of ram horn always falls off a piece of his horn and now it's in there. Release, there it is. There you go. And this is the, the, the major flaw with this figure. This side of his horn always pops off when I try to wedge him in there. And that's no good. And I've tried to do it either way. It's just, it's the same result. It's just, it don't work. It's too tight. It's just, it's not, not a pleasant experience. That's a little bit better, but it's not, it's, again, you're still experiencing the same problem. And he's going to get stuck again, and he's stuck again. And that's just, that's no good. That is no bueno. That is no bueno at all. And yeah, not cool. Not, not cool. Let's see the weapons pop off. Now, the G1, though, the G1 tape fits in there, boom, perfectly. <laughs> so, this shows you that that little, that little extra bit of, of width here makes a lot of difference, unfortunately. But see, the G1 tapes just, you know, work perfectly. Just, yeah. So, little miscalculation there with the, uh, with the dimensions of their tapes, unfortunately. There's also one more mechanism that doesn't work quite well, um, because this little panel here, you can't push this back, and it will kind of click and lock into place, and what's supposed to happen is, you're supposed to be able to push the center button here, and it's supposed to pop that forward, and, you know, obviously you can fit multiple tapes in here, so when you bring one out, you can pop this, and it pops forward, it kind of works, but it gets stuck. You can see it just kind of got stuck in there. And then what you have to do is you have to kind of undo this and kind of swing this around so you can get in here, so you can pull his head up, and then you can kind of, and then you can push it out from the back. And that's a whole thing. That's a whole debacle. So, unfortunately, this mechanism, uh, it just, it don't work. It don't work well. The tape doesn't fit in there like it's supposed to, and that is just very... Very unfortunate for what is a very well done figure. This is one little miscalculation, unfortunately. It's just, yeah, yeah. It sucks, but it is what it is. It's not a deal breaker for me. It doesn't ruin the figure by any stretch of the imagination. I still love this, but yeah, just sucks that they just kind of miscalculated just that little bit, and that little bit made a lot of difference, but no, well. Now, as far as storage for the accessories, uh, there is no storage. Not that I have found anyway. I haven't seen anywhere. You can kind of clip this or dab this somewhere. It doesn't seem like it. I mean, there are a bunch of tabs back here, but that's for the transformation. It doesn't really... I don't know. Do that. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Storage. Storage. All right for storage. I don't know. There you go.
So there you have Recording Alliance, and yeah, I absolutely love this figure. Love it, love it, love it. Um, the robot mode looks fan-freaking-tastic as far as I'm concerned. Um, the boombox mode looks really good too. Um, love Ramhorn, nice little cassette bot. The only two real flaws, for me anyway, are that the tape doesn't quite fit well in the tape deck, and that mechanism within the tape deck doesn't really work that well either, so... So things that could have been tweaked and executed a bit better, but all in all, it's, like I said, it's not a deal breaker. It doesn't ruin the figure for me. I still think this figure is fantastic and I'm just in love with it. But of course, that is just my opinion, but let me know what you think. So there you go. Now I picked this up from TF Safari. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also check out my third party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Love Peace Paranormal, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below, and I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the DSO2 Recording Alliance, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, bomb in your face. Do you think you got through to Prime? Well, let's hope so, because if I didn't, we're all gonna look like... I'm here! Oh, well, I... I guess now we have nothing to worry about. Yeah, nothing to worry about at all! I'm gonna go get myself killed now! Alright then, wait, what?! Toaster oven, that's the toaster oven thing I was about to say!